Good evening, church. Hope you guys are all doing well. For today, I want to speak a little bit on uh, rebelliousness, not in the way that we typically see it in culture, see it in teens and kids, and uh, just the typical uh, association, association, association with the word. Um, I want to talk about being rebellious in the context of Jesus. And when I say that, I mean Jesus was rebellious against culture. He, he came and disrupted our flow in life. He disrupted uh, the Pharisees and their authority that they gave themselves, the authority that they thought they had of this world, which was recognized by some, but they don't have authority when it comes to God's standards. We, we have a very clear role in this life, and we are servants of Christ. We're servants of God. And as soon as we get wrapped up in the mindset that we are entitled to things uh, or that we have authority over people and that um, just that rabbit hole and that tunnel vision that people can that we see people have I think God reminds us in different ways by disrupting our lives and just as he disrupted Job's life and when Job came to him he was very clear on Job's role and that's not to say that God is a, a and leads in a dictatorship type of way or he leads out of fear alone but God has a way of reminding us that he desires a relationship with us and that relationship goes as following his commands, living out the way that he intended for us to have joy in life. So I want to talk a little bit about Matthew chapter 6 and what Jesus teaches the people here and the apostles. It says this, So when you give to the poor, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be honored by men. Truly I say to you, they have their reward in full. But if you give to the poor, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving will be in secret, and Father, your Father who sees what is done is uh, done in secret will reward you. So Jesus calls us to, uh, when we're giving, when we're teaching to others, when we're anytime we are giving forth to the people of this earth, we're just we're just doing it to please God. We're we're speaking the the gospel. We're not aiming to better our our image and our view in front of people. And I think there's many examples throughout history as well as today of people having skewed motivations and what they what they portray their messages versus what their actual desires and what their heart is. When he says, don't uh, blow your own trumpet, I mean, I think of advertising. I think of, you know, going out and proclaiming, look at the words that I'm saying, look at what I'm doing. Uh, that didn't really go well for Nebuchadnezzar. And I encourage you to check out that passage and what happens when he did that, when he tooted his own trumpet. Um, hypocrites and false prophets already have the reward in full. That's, that's encouraging. It's also a wake-up call that, yes, they may have a false sense of authority over the people that they're ministering to in, in their own um, evil ways, but their reward is in full. They, that means they've obtained everything they can attain in this world and in, on this earth through what they're doing already. And further down in the chapter, it's a, a, it hits again that the rewards and the treasures stored up in this earth are not going to be up there in heaven with us. We... We can try to scrape and succeed in this world and build a, a fortune or whatever we think our goals are that are going to fulfill us and, and create this sort of utopia in our lives, but it's not going to matter at the end. At the end of the day, we serve Jesus and our aim should be fixated on heaven alone. Now, that means that we need to seek to find the reward in the Father. We seek to please an audience of one, one father, one son, one spirit, not the rest of the audience that may hear our good news and uh, want to follow us because that can be a dangerous thing. If, they, if we lead people and they kind of stroke our ego, so to speak, in a way that thinks, oh yeah, you know what, I am, I am maybe a little bit more special or maybe I, I am above average, but that's false. And I think that's what where people fail in life is that if we don't guard our hearts and recognize that that's a real possibility and a threat to the kingdom, then we can fall victim to it. I want to say this, be rebellious and read your Bibles. Be rebellious and pray. 
most of culture and society turn those things down in, um, in, in a facetious way that doesn't recognize how impactful and powerful those, those tools are. God gave us weapons to combat the evil in this world. He gave us scripture and he gave us prayer. Now, when Jesus tells the apostles how to pray, it's a very convicted prayer it's, it's in Matthew, it's in Luke, and, and that's something that I've adopted to um, humble myself over the, the, the recent years of um, at nighttime, I pray the Lord's Prayer first to set the tone for whatever other things are on my mind. And I think that's something that we um, should recognize that when we come to the Father on our knees, then when we pray this template set before us by Jesus, there's a lot more to it than the words itself. And I like to close out this encouragement with praying that prayer to you all. And I hope that your week is in, uh, impactful in your families and in those that you come in contact with. I pray that your, your minds are sharpened by the word. I pray that you are able to put aside all the stress and the anxiety and the, the falseness that is just seeming to cloud social media news everywhere we look. There's a very strong antidote to that, and that is Christ. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Amen. I love you, church, and I'm looking forward to seeing you soon.